Hi everyone, I want to talk to you about how to save money while staying healthy. Some of you may say, that's impossible. It's really challenging to maintain a healthy lifestyle while saving money. I know this myth is out there, and I say it's a myth because I literally wrote the book on this, Eat Vegan on $4 a Day. You could have done it when I wrote the book 11 years ago, and you can still do it today if you know what to do. But there are so many misconceptions that eating healthy has to be elitist or expensive. But I want to give you three tips on how to fight this misconception, which is so prevalent. How do you do that? The short answer, and I always get this question, and I've developed it into a five-second soundbite because two Emmys and the National Press Club Award while I was a TV consumer reporter, I have eaten this way all my life as I watched my mom and both sisters get breast cancer and a whole lot more. And I continue to be a nationally ranked sprinter. So I know you can do this, and I know you can do it on a budget. But the question is how, and the short five-second answer is beans, grains, and greens. So let's do a bigger deep dive into that. So the first tip is smart grocery shopping. Buy in bulk. And you might say, well, doesn't that waste a lot of money? Well, here's the thing. With grains in particular, you can freeze them. Initially at the cash register, when you buy that big purchase, it's going to last you for a long time. Nuts are another thing that you can buy in bulk, and they really do well stored in the freezer. And when you buy in bulk, it saves packaging as well as saving costs, so it's good for the environment as well. Buy seasonal. Things are so much cheaper when they are grown right next to you in a garden or even a farmer's market or a local co-op those things are gonna be so much cheaper than if they have to be transported across the country or even across the world. And again, so much better for the environment when you do that. Every season around the country, around the world is different. So keep a list handy of the kinds of things that are seasonal to you and really make sure you stick to that list. And if you are out and about and you wanna to go to a farmer's market or a farm stand, you will definitely find the kinds of things that are seasonally grown. Buy store brands. This may mean that you look high, you look low to see those brands because the manufacturers pay big bucks so that you will look at eye level and be tempted to buy that more expensive manufacturer's brand. But the store brand is often made by those manufacturers just labeled a different way. Many of these tips, like the ones I just mentioned, are found in my book, Eat Vegan on $4 a Day. And after I wrote it, because I was the first person to actually crunch the numbers on every single recipe, all of these tips I found, it's one of the reasons my publisher doesn't do cookbooks anymore, because they were found online, plagiarized in many different ways. And so I just think it's important. And the whole reason I write is just to give you the information because in the long run, we all save money and our health. Number one in this area is batch cooking. When you are cooking up something, make sure that you double or triple it. If you can't freeze it, put it in the fridge and make sure that you're eating it maybe for breakfast or lunch the next day. I always do this, especially with salads. Use leftovers. Big area where you can just make sure that you have made enough for cutting up the ingredients for a salad, that they're there. If you're not sure you're going to eat a salad that day, those ingredients like chopped carrots and broccoli and cauliflower, they will keep almost up to a week before they start getting brown and nasty. But if you don't know for sure when you're going to eat that salad, having the ingredients prepped beforehand is a great way to save money. Plan ahead. I can't stress this enough. You can do a meal plan for a few days, a week, but this just makes sure that when you go to the store, you are not impulse shopping because it's really a challenge not to do that. But if you stick to a schedule and a list, it doesn't have to be any kind of app, although there are apps where you can track not only what you're buying, but the cost of things. You can still go back to that old notes app that you have on your phone somewhere and just keep a list and then come back to that week after week. That's what I do. What if you forget your list or you don't have a list? Just come back to a template. It doesn't have to be complicated or rocket science. What do I say? Beans, grains, and greens. If you stick to that kind of a meal plan, you will get balanced nutrition and also super low costs. Big tip on how to eat healthy on a budget is do-it-yourself food production. Now, how are you going to do this? Some of us have more of a green thumb than others, and some of us are naturals at killing things in our gardens. And all I can say is that there are YouTubes for that, but you also, if you buy seeds, there'll be directions on the back, and often it's better to start the seeds indoor and then transplant them when you get outside. But if you don't have space to start a garden or inclination to do so, just starting with inside little container vegetables and herbs are a great way to get fresh produce into your tummy. And also, it's very inexpensive to do this because if you are maintaining the herbs right there or just little vegetables, you can start them in all kinds of different containers that they have available now. It's just a way to make sure that you're getting your nutrition, but that you are not going out and buying food that you might otherwise be wasting if you buy too much of it or you're not sure what you're going to be doing in terms of eating it for the rest of the week. Homegrown food is definitely a way to cut your grocery bills and to make sure that you are eating organic food if you want, but also to make sure that you are maintaining good health by eating organic when you can.
I mean, really, how many times have you been to the store and you're looking at produce and you're wondering, like, how many days has it been here? Or where did it come from? It's just not looking as fresh and perky as when you grow it yourself. Another big area is preserving the food. So you can can it, you can freeze it, you can dry it. If canning is too much for you, just knowing that you can freeze it in a baggie or I freeze bananas. I always have frozen bananas on hand in a glass jar with a pop top lid and it just makes it easy when I want to make smoothies, which I'm always doing on a daily basis, or just drying out herbs on the counter. So if you don't use all of them, if you've snipped them off your indoor plant and you don't use it, just let them dry out. And within two, three, four days, you can still be using it as a dried herb or you can put them in a baggie and freeze the dried herbs in the freezer. Another big area of food preparation is do-it-yourself snacks. How many of us waste money on those really unhealthy, sugary snack foods that they have at the store? You can make fruit leathers, you can make your own trail mix, uh, just all kinds of snacks that you can make on your own. Throw in some raisins, some dried cranberries to give it some sweetness. You just don't have to add added sugar. When you start reading labels and realize how much added sugar is in stuff, it's just to keep us addicted and coming back for more. We don't need to do that. For my money, bananas are my favorite fast food. I just have like three bunches of them sitting on the counter. And if I buy too many and they get too ripe, I freeze them for my smoothie ingredients. So I'd really like to encourage you to try some of these tips. And feel free in the comments below to let us know what kinds of tips you have. And if you try some of these tips, how it works for you. I'd love to hear from you because as a community, we grow so much together by sharing all these things. And it's free. If this has been of value to you, please do like and subscribe. It really does help the channel grow. And in the meantime, gotta run. See you in the next one. Thanks for watching.